Hi there, my name is Jack Hargreaves. I'm going to be reading from Chen Tun Chen's short story collection and first published book, Submarines in the Night. The reading is from the eponymous and first story of the collection, Submarines in the Night, and it begins halfway through the story with a few paragraphs missing in the middle of it just to keep the reading contextually coherent. All that said, here we go. In eighth grade, I invented a new game, dreaming up worlds from the moats drifting in the sunlight. I had a sketchy grasp of history by then. I would imagine a speck of dust as a planet, then come up with the planet's whole history from beginning to end. From when the inhabitants learned how to make fire, all the way up to when they invented spaceships and started exploring other specks of dust. I obviously looked up the history of Earth as I went. Soon, using a whole day to conceive several thousand years' worth of existence felt like it made for too loose a structure. Too many gaping holes meant the fantasy was liable to slip away. If I had had it in me, I could have dedicated one day here to one day there, but it was a major project and not, not at all fun. Eventually, I settled on a hundred years between sleeps. I decided on the planet's landforms, species, resources, and countries, and after a few days everything took on a life of its own. The way my imagination worked was like pushing a boat into a river. The hard part was getting it off the bank and into the water. Then all was needed was a nudge and my imagination would do the rest. Scenarios from these daydreams often seeped into my dreams at night. There were times I even felt like everything that happened on our planet had actually been imagined by someone else, somewhere else, captivated by a moat of dust. But there was a problem with this game. No matter how I started things off, world war inevitably broke out. I tried time and again, but I couldn't avoid it. When the fires, cries of battle and mushroom clouds gave me sleepless nights, I would have to put an end to another fantasy, snuffing it out like a cigarette butt between my fingertips. Next came the game I found most fascinating of all, and it was also the most dangerous. I created a submarine. My granddad had been an oceanographer. When I was seven years old and he was sixty, he ignored the family's protests and accepted an invite to join an ocean expedition. Where to and what to do exactly, he never told us. Nor did he ever come back. As a young child, I used to fall asleep to his stories of the sea every night. My dad had heard those very same tales when he was little, and to this day he believes they were the cause for my sickness. I often think about my granddad. In my imagination, he has become one with the sea. At fourteen in ninth grade, I decided to construct an underwater reverie. On the back of my lesson notes I drew a detailed blueprint for a submarine. I selected the toughest alloys for the materials, though what those might have been I never checked, and for the engine I chose a perpetual motion machine. The submarine was the shape of an olive, with a blue body and portholes on the front and sides made with ultra strong glass that had night vision capabilities. Through them, the bottom of the ocean looked cobalt blue rather than inky black. The interior had the exact same two-story layout as my home. There were my parents' room, my room, the living room with our piano in, and the bathroom. How I imagined it, by day the building was the same old building, stood in the county town, nestled among the mountains. At night, I simply pressed the button on my desk, and the whole interior transformed into the inside of the submarine powering through the ocean. My mum and dad would be asleep in the next room over, oblivious, unknowing even whether the darkness outside their window was the black of night or the ocean's depths. From the moment I conceived of this fantasy, I spent a lot less time daydreaming. I had to save my imagination for the evenings. Not that I listened any better in class. Instead, I worked non-stop to refine my submarine designs, 
to plot new dangerous adventures. When I got home from independent study, I started to work out the outline of that evening's exploits. Then I tapped on the desk and slipped into the fantasy where I sat. Everything tended to happen as I'd planned it, but occasionally events took unexpected turns beyond my control. That was when things got really interesting. When I went to bed, the thread of what had unfolded that evening would carry on into my dreams. Tendrils of seaweed and the luster of coral danced outside my window every night. Thank you very much. If you want to know what those missing paragraphs are, you'll have to wait until it's translated, if and when it's translated, into English. Well, published and translated into English. Thanks.